Dear friends, uh, this session is aimed at making you under understand the various aspects which are related to sale on high sea. Sale on high sea is a reality in today's globalized trade operations. Dear friends, uh, we will today try to understand that what is the conceptual framework of sale on high sea. Additionally, we will try to understand how sale on high sea transaction take place, what are the various benefits and motivations for uh, getting into sale on high sea transactions. And dear friends, we will also un uh, try to understand that how a sale on high sea uh, uh, contract is framed between two trading parties. Let me start. Before uh, I start, I welcome to each one of you to, to this session. And dear friends, sale on high sea is a transaction which takes place between two parties where goods are traded on high sea. Let me first define you what is high sea. We have in a convention which is uh, framed by United Nations. This is known as United Nations Conventions on Law of Sea, which defines territorial water, contiguous zone, exclusive economic zones of respective countries. My dear friends, law is very simple, very clear, very lucid. It, it talks about, it describes about that each country has 12 nautical mile as a territorial water and additional 12 nautical mile as a contiguous zone. From the baseline of a country, 200 nautical mile is exclusive economic zones of the respective country. Dear friends, uh, as a country, each country usually specifies its rights, which, which we are, what will be the custom lines. Some countries of the world define 24 nautical miles as a custom line. When it cr cross the barriers, it, the goods will be deemed to enter to a domestic tariff area of the country. In some jurisdictions, it may be 12 nautical miles. My respected friends, any vessel comes into India must file IGM before getting into custom water of India and any transaction which take place beyond India's custom water which is 12, 24 nautical mile before filing of IGM and after filing of EGM when a, a vessel starts from, foreign, from a foreign country it files EGM which is maybe 12 or 24 nautical mile depending on the respective jurisdictions which that country specific country frames with and this vessel file EGM and then the goods are on high sea. So a sale on high sea transaction is a transaction which takes place after the goods has left the territorial water or the custom water of country of export and before it enter into territorial water or custom water of India. So goods are usually on high sea. A transaction takes place between two parties where party A sell their goods or its goods to party B. There are a lot of reasons why sale on high sea transaction take place and why government promote and facilitate it. Uh, we will discuss and deliberate all those issues in today's technical session. So with this, I welcome to each one of you to today's technical session. Welcome. Dear friends, so let us move to our, to our technical sessions where we will appraise the various aspects of how sale on high sea transactions take place. So, First, let us understand the conceptual framework. What is exactly a sale on high sea transactions? Dear friends, a sale on high sea transactions is a transaction which is carried out by actual consignee. When we say actual consignee, it means uh, the person who has imported a cargo from a foreign country. Let us take an exemption. Gentleman, Mr. Vikas Gupta has imported a cargo from, let us take an assumption, another assumption from Ajambik, a shipload of pulses. So he has imported shipload of pulses from Mojambik, which is loaded at a port of Bira, which cross the custom boundary of Mojambik, comes on high sea. And now this actual consignee want to sell this cargo to some prospective buyers, which may be one buyer or a group of buyer. So as to make more profit because usually we say that merchants has no country. Merchants goes to a country where there is a business. Business people always looks for wealth, money, wealth creation. That's the job they do. And this particular trader who is a consignee at the moment is looking for subsequent buyers to whom he can sell and make, make money. And dear friends, that's, that is how business takes place. There are certain conditions that this transaction must take place on high sea. We have already discussed and let me explain to, that this ownership of the title, ownership of the cargo must be transferred to these prospective buyers before this cargo entered the territorial water of country of import. So a transaction which is take, taking place by actual consignee, by 
uh, to the prospective buyers by transfer of ownership which take place through bill of lading and cargo is traded on sale on high sea. Usually we can say that any transaction which take place after the port of loading in this case the port of loading is port of Bira which is in Mozambique and before the port of discharge let us take assumption that this cargo is coming to India it is coming to a port of let us say Mangalore in in uh, western coast of India so before port of discharge before entering the custom water of India the title or the ownership of the cargo must transfer to subsequent buyers in India there, is a, there are various legislations which define and most important among them being the uh, uh, Indian Goods and Service Tax Act which has a legal framework under section uh, 7 subsection 2 of the IG, IGST Act mm -hmm. supply of goods in course of import mm -hmm. into territory of India and this course of import is, is, is here it should be understood as that after the port of loading and before the port of discharge. So in between any any transaction which take place and it's further said till they cross the custom frontier of India will be deemed to be a supply in course of interstate trade or commerce that is how that the acts define and hence in such a cargo uh, the GST will not be applicable because it has taken place beyond the territory of India should it has taken place within the territory of India law of India will apply and in this case the ultimate buyer the penultimate buyer will file the bill of entry and clear the cargo and when he clear the cargo he will pay custom duty plus applicable IGST as per the legal framework under the various legislations in India so dear friends in similar fashion let us understand that the conceptual framework once in a, in, a, in a different fashion. So when a sale on high sea transaction takes place, where high sea does not mean that the, trans, the sale on high sea can happen only in case when goods are traded by, uh, by vessels or goods are um, transported by vessels and traded at high sea. The, the word high sea is used, it, 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 it means that sale on high sea can also take place when goods are transported by air. The word high sea is used because 95% of world goods, of world trade is transported by vessels because it's the cheapest mode of transport. So that's why word high sea is used. Even sale on high sea can take place in case of air cargo. Only condition being after EGM, prior to IGM, after the port of loading, before the port of discharge, before the airport of discharge, sale must take place beyond territorial water of India and after the territorial water of the country, it, it will be deemed to be considered as a transaction as sale on high sea. So dear friends, one should also try to understand the taxable event when export and import take place. Uh, we have uh, let, let me re reiterate that there is a international convention which is known as United Nations Convention on Law of Sea, which define territorial water of a country, which define contiguous zone of a country, exclusive economic zone, and also international continental shelf. From the baseline, 12 nautical mile is a territorial water. From the baseline up to 24 nautical mile is a contiguous zone, which sometimes is also referred as custom water. Then from baseline, I mean, let us take a baseline as Goa Beach. From Goa Beach, 200 nautical mile will be exclusive economic zone and around 220, I mean, from territorial water, from baseline 220 or from territorial water, it may be uh, 212 nautical mile will be con considered as international continental shelf. So these are the broad concepts which are defined by legal framework and Indian law, Indian Customs Act, section 2, subsection 23, define imports as anything which is coming into India. When it say with grammat grammatical uh, variations and cognate expressions, it means that the goods must enter territorial water of India and even there are subsequent judgment which I would like to specially mention it is known as uh, um, it, it, this is very very popular case uh, Kiran Shipping Mill versus Union of India in which the process of import began movement goods entered territorial water of India and process of import is complete when goods are cleared. It means out of charge order is given. If goods are in a bonded warehouse, goods are still considered to be in course of import. Similar fashion, section 2 subsection 28 of the 
of the Customs Act 1962 define export wherein uh, anything which is go going going out of India it means goods leaving territorial boundary or custom water of India. So subsequently we can also see another uh, diagram which define that how a UN clause define the territorial or uh, maritime water uh, rights of the country. One of the key reason which comes to any traders minds is that what are the key motivations what are the key reasons why sail on high seas such a hyped concepts and such a important concepts which a traders must leverage in order to make i mean to make his exam operations far more attractive competitive far more lucrative and reasons are very simple my dear friends sail on high sea there are several reasons and most important reasons for sail on high sea transaction is a reduction in transaction cost transaction cost of the business become far less when we buy goods say on sale on high sea how let me explain let us take an assumption we buy goods we somebody buy goods mr a buy goods from switzerland it is a gold gold worth 100 crore of, crore of rupee he brings the goods in into india because it is a canalized item let us say mr a work for a company called mmtc he brings the goods into india a gold worth 100 crore rupee he pay custom duty plus gst so let us take an assumption that an am amount of 10 crore rupee is paid wherein 5 crore rupee is a custom duty 5 crore rupee is a gst that is what he has paid in order to clear the cargo and on 110 crore rupee again he sell this cargo since he sell this cargo his transaction is more than 40 lakh rupees which is a threshold limit for imposition of of gst in india he has to again pay gst for outward supply outward supply so he has to file uh, and he will claim the input credit of igst which he has paid at the time of custom clearance plus he has to pay some amount of duty since it will be treated as a outward supply when you sell it for example to gentleman b the transaction on 110 crore rupee if for example there is a five percent tax of gst it will become around 11 115.5 um, crore rupee of transaction for the final buyer to to soap procure this gold now in sale on high sea what happens somebody buy the gold let us say mr a buy the golds from switzerland and transfer the title on sale on high sea goods before goods entering territorial water of india mr b source the goods on sale on high sea let us take an assumption in earlier case the procurement cost watch with a profit of let us say for example profit is again uh, for the gentleman a is let us take an assumption it is 10 percent let us take an assumption in that case it means around 11.5 additional crore so landed cost will be around 126 crore rupee for the final buyer but in the new case in case of sale on high sea it is 10 percent profit 100 crore rupee of cargo 110 crore rupee of cargo plus gst on 100 10 crore rupee and custom he has to pay if you calculate by your running excel sheet landed cost of the cargo in case of sale on high sea will be far lower which may not be 126 crore rupee maybe a little less even if it, it, it he saves one crore rupee that is a huge huge saving for a gentleman like b so that is why the the tax saving is the prime reason that sale on high sea transaction take place dear friends in addition to that sale on high sea also take place because there are certain cargo which are declared as a state trading enterprise canalized items which can be imported only by canalizing agency i mean only for example canalizing agency like mmtc stc pec or in addition to that for example uh, certain uh, in case of certain fruits it can be a pida or nafed so there are certain items which are declared by dgft as a canalized item so if, if that agency can buy they will source it from a foreign country and will sell it to subsequent buyers in india prospective buyers in india on sale on high sea basis reason being cutting the cost of the business by saving taxes plus they di directly cannot source it from a ultimate supplier abroad because the item is a canalized item it must be sourced by the notified canalizing agencies as framed and enshrined by dgft in its the in its uh, schedule one of import policy dear friends let us not forget and uh, let us must appreciate that the, the, the goods which are traded in bulk are also usually traded on sale on 
high sea. These may be bulk cargo. What kind of a bulk cargo? It can be coal, it can be crude oil, it can be gases. Usually it is a standard and standardized and homogeneous cargo. So homogeneous cargo traded in bulk. I take an example and you can take other variety of example. Various kind of cereals, various kind of pulses, various kind of edible oil, various kinds of sugar. I mean uh, which, which you source from, from international market. Dear friends, such a bulk cargo is also usually traded on sale on high sea. Let me take an example. For example, there is a businessman who is a coal merchant. He is based in, let us take, there is, take an assumption, he is based in city of Jaipur. He do a business of, hypothetically, he do a business of 5,000 crore rupee of coal. He sell coals in whole of Rajasthan. He is a popular man in Rajasthan, Jaipur, but he may not be a big man when we discuss about international business. So if we go, for example, to a country to source to source coal, let us take an exam, uh, assumption, country of export is Australia. He is not a big buyer. 5,000 crore rupees is nothing in, in, in coal business. Coal mines are developed. Coal mines are sourced, auctioned. Then they are developed. Coal is extracted. It is brought to particular port from where it is exported all over the world it requires huge investment and uh, even if uh, he find a supplier the cost of coal will be much higher so coal is usually sourced so a, a investor will develop a particular mine will source the coal will bring it to port from where he will he will transport the coal by using ultra large cargo carrier ulcc to particular destination where prospective buyer like a gentleman based in in jaipur uh, who, who do a business of coal of 5000 crore rupee will approach to such seller who will be offering them far lower price which otherwise he has to pay for example if we go directly and contact since by buying very small quantity it will be far more um, um, far higher prices when you source it on sale on ic since this gentleman is worth billions of dollars of company own several mines own his own vessel to transport and it is a what you say is a wizard of coal trade you understand in and around in in and out of, of coal trade so he usually trade in bulk when he trade in bulk several kinds kind of efficiencies are created for example price become very low freight become very low logistic cost become very less and your friends when you have in bulk Bulk, then the overall business cost of which, which trading and documentation and various clearances become also far lower which makes the cargo very very attractive and very very competitive cargo for the prospective buyer to buy to so bulk cargo and high value cargo like gold example i've taken is usually traded on sale on high sea freight advantages we have just covered in addition to that dear friends um, there are sole indenting agents let me take an example uh, for example there is a certain kind of cargo which are usually sold only through sole indenting agents well, who do are let, let me take an example uh, for example there is a cargo which has radioactive item there is an x-ray machine in which cobalt 65 is used my respected friend you must be aware cobalt 65 is a radioactive item and require prior clearances from department of atomic energy such a clearance require prior clearances from department of atomic energy otherwise your cargo will not be cleared by indian custom reason being what is the reason may i tell you because you may not be a smart person to deal in radioactive cargo you must be aware about a fact that there was an incident in Delhi wherein a X-ray machine or similar kind of machine is sourced from uh, a university, I will not name, a university in New Delhi and sold in a Mayapuri market. So it was it was cut into pieces, put into a furnace and then and when, when it was put into furnace, a blast happened, lot of radioactivity happened and two people died on the spot because radio, the handling of the radioactive items, I mean at the time of, of, of use of such machine and subsequent when you uh, when you uh, subsequently when you clear it um, i mean even as a scrap require due diligence and lot of you say understanding that what repercussions it may cause to our society and that's why government of india say the customs government of india frame rules dgft frame rules which custom follow at ccr we have discussed ccr which is a custom compliance requirement and uh, indian custom will not clear such kind of cargo so such kind of cargo is usually dealt by sole indenting agent they buy in bulk and sell it to doctors or maybe subsequent hospitals or various kind of clinic center polyclinic center or various kind of other facilities where such x-ray machines may be required so dear friends 
because it requires clearances for uh, for you say for atomic from department of atomic energy so one person who may be sometime having a good knowledge about about rules and regulations governing the trade of of uh, products which has element of atomic energy uh, may be well aware about the rules and regulation will comply with department of atomic energy and will source such cargo and will and transfer the title on sale on high sea basis ensuring due compliance for such such you say prospective buyer who would like to source such cargo which otherwise can they cannot buy dear friends in addition to that there are there may be regulations of country of export for example you are sourcing this radioactive item from canada now canadian government has imposed very strict regulations which which export of items in which radioactive material is used even it, it is for medical use reason being that because this may be misused by the people in order to create a anarchy in our in, in our society or in our systems in our peace living world system so dear friends that's why uh, sole inventing agents are common when radioactive items are used dear friends sometime we import cargo and due to some lack of authorization uh, which dgft specify in para 2.03 of chapter 2 of foreign trade policy where in they specify that all jo, um, domestic rules and regulations circular and all you say uh, guidelines will mutatis mutandis apply on import transactions unless otherwise exempted sometime you buy you do not know you whether you have your authorizations which which handling of bis cargo fssi cargo or plant quarantine or drug controller of india then it become easy to transfer the title to somebody who has such such licenses to clear such cargo at destination port so sale on high sea take place assurance of genuine trade deals now it is many a time sale on high sea is 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 becoming more popular is becoming far more beneficial because ultimate buyer is assured of a quality which otherwise he may not be let me take an example i met somebody uh, who was traveling to africa and he was sourcing from cameroon uh, this uh, wood which we, he will bring it into india and will will feed to his factory which manufacture uh, plywood and various other kind veneer plywood and other items which will be used for household constructions nowadays so he sourced wood and he was not assured of a quality wood quality supply because jungles are cut he may not be assured so usually he enter into what we call as sale on high sea so there are there are sellers in cameroon who will cut the jungles they will take necessary environmental clearances from from government and then they will load a ship load then they will bring the ship load on on high sea maybe 24 uh, nautical mile away from from uh, from custom water of 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 cameroon once the cargo comes on high sea it becomes the the rules and regulations of country of export does not apply you are now at international water now if this buyer go he go by speed boat at high sea check the cargo and if he find the wood to be as per his specific requirement he can enter into a high sea sale contract with such supplier and bring such a wood in india for subsequent running of saw machines so as to manufacture uh, you say veneer or or plywood to sell in a very attractive market like india for domestic use dear friends then sometimes sale on high sea also happens because of poor, poor trade channels uh, people also love to enter into sale on high sea transactions because they they have very less working capital they cannot invest for longer period of time i'll take an example indian oil company usually buy their oil hpcl buy their oil on sale on high sea basis from various suppliers so they source it and they want to cut their working capital requirement cut their business cycle because they cannot invest for 6 months down the line or 4 months down the line but they require oil to to you say not to 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 uh, refine and to market in a vast country like india then quality assurance from dubious suppliers is also one of the fundamental reason free trade zones has also emerged a important network for leveraging sales on high sea because they are usually treated as a foreign territory so people buy in bulk keep it in foreign trade uh, ftwz foreign trade and warehousing zones and from where they makes their supply sometimes sale on high sea also take place because of supply restrictions for example there are certain countries they do not have a 
normal trade relations with with some countries of the world let us take a assumption iran does not have a normal trade relations with united states of america so now they want to buy certain items which are manufactured in iran so they will uh, us will somebody will buy it from 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 uh, usa and uh, if, if it is not a item which is under a sanction list let us say it is a food item or medical supply which is not a sanctioned item under ofac rules so he will buy the cargo from usa and supply to ultimate buyers in iran uh, also obeying the, the various un sanctions or ofac sanctions which are in place for a country like iran so these are supply restriction because of which sale on high seas take place dear friends so various benefits or goods are available at a short notice we have discussed rather than buying the i mean the entire shipment you can buy a small quantity like coal example we have taken you can buy a small quantity as per your specific business requirement and goods are available at a very cheap rate there is no tax upon tax so you have a tax saving and dear friends you also claim input tax credit so as to cut your cost of business various drawbacks are it's a cumbersome procedure there is a loading of loading of loading on pricing by indian customs there are potential frauds also loading of 2% by indian custom i will discuss subsequently a lot of document documentation is required in drafting the contract to have a sale on high sea transaction so how sale on high sea take place dear friends somebody will buy the car and uh, once the goods leaves let us say he start his cargo from port of da nang in vietnam and this cargo will leave the territorial water of vietnam then he will transfer the title of the goods through bill of lading bill of lading is an important document for essential feature of bill of lading is document is a contract of carriage is a document of title is a receipt of cargo is a quasi negotiable instrument so that's the beauty of the bill of lading which transfer the title from the original consignee to subsequent consignee by drafting a contract which is usually done on a uh, 100 rupees stamp where sale on high sea deed is framed between such actual consignee to subsequent consignee and uh, this uh, stamp date of such is uh, an stamping of such uh, contract must be after goods left the territorial water or custom water of country of export and before entering the custom water of india this is the precaution you should take it must be the deal must be done before filing of igm it means goods must the title must be transferred to ultimate buyer before goods entered the custom water of india and same goods can be sold again and again i mean can you sell the same goods like your property flat you can sell it to somebody who subsequently can sell it to somebody because it's it's a it's a title issue once you own a title you are entitled to sell it to some to subsequent uh, to subsequent buyers similar fashion sale on high sea can also have a string sales when i say string sales sale upon sale upon sale same cargo may be traded four time five time 10 times 15 times and in case of crude oil even for a larger number of times dear friends sale must take place beyond territorial jurisdictions of india that's the major precaution that you i'm repeating again and again that you must keep in mind and dear friends no gst will be applicable on such uh, sales which happens on sale on high sea dear friends there are certain precaution which must be take for example when goods title is transferred you must file an amendment in the in the igm so as to change the detail of the cargo since in our previous sessions we have discussed that bill of the detail of bill of entry matches with that of igm if the details does not match in edi system there will be a error so you have to make an amendment in your bill of lading or in your igm it is better that amendment must be filed by such penultimate buyer in the in the in the igm so as to ensure proper custom clearance at destination port uh, usually sale on high sea contracts are done either on cfr and cif i will recommend always do it on cif because other in quotas cannot be used because you are between two ports so other other in quotas for example x work fas or fob can be used at a origin port and subsequent like cpt can be used in or cip or dat or uh, um, ddu or dd uh, ddp can be used in in country hinterland so dear friends only two in quotas which are between two ports are cfr and cif which you can leverage uh in order to draft such kind of contract 2% hss load factor is a common practice by indian customs which they will charge in case 
the differential in price between the origin between the between the what at what price he sourced and at what price the actual consignee sell the cargo is less than 2 percent 2 percent uh, hss load factor high c sale load factor will be charged in other cases it will not be charged dear friends ultimate buyers take the responsibility to clear the cargo at destination he pay custom duty plus igst and all other you say uh, notifications exemptions and entitlement will be available to him if he uh, otherwise if he have directly imported or if he is clearing the goods on sale on ic custom treats both the transaction same only requirement is that they will ask you for subsequent uh, sales i mean the price they want to know and they will ask you sale on high c contract so as to uh, understand that what uh, at what price the cargo has started and at what price the cargo is finally reaching in india and the final buyer will be entitled to claim input tax credit igst which has been paid he can claim it it cut, cut his business cost significantly and makes a makes his transaction to be an important transaction dear friends the final buyer will also be entitled to same and non discriminatory rules which is classification rate of duty notifications and benefits which are applicable to similar imports in case of a normal sale so these are some of the details which i would like to i would like to share with you all which is which drafting of sale on high c contract and i request all of you uh, should you require any additional detail please be in touch we shall provide you any additional detail on sale on high c so with this we end our technical session thank you very much dear friends uh, we have well understood today that how what is a sale on high c as a concept and what is the legal framework governing it what are the various acts and the legislations which has its uh, impacts or its touching legal boundary which the uh, uh, the the sale on high c transactions what are the tax implications and what are the various motivations and benefits involved in sale on high c transactions dear friends we have also understood how contract is framed what specific precautions an exporter or an importer uh, if they have to keep in mind while executing a sale on high c transactions uh, for sale on high c transactions are reality for certain type of cargo for example bulk cargo speculative cargo cargo which is sold by uh, sole indenting agents in addition to that sale on high c is also a very popular method when there is there is a short term shortage of some essential food or some such kind of item thereby creating urgent need to procure them on sale on high c it cut cost it facilitate both exporter and importer and it's a business reality because it's create win win situation so let us leverage sale on high c transactions in our export and import transactions with this I thanks to each one of you. Thank you very much.